Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm so happy that you're back for another video. Um, my name is Bookish Binger, but you can call me BB. Um, and I'm so happy you're back for another um, episode um, of this channel and another video. Okay, um, so before we start, let me address um, two elephants in the room. Uh, the second one I'll address after this, but the first one being that I promised you guys this video um, a while back. Actually, I think it's been a few days since I promised you this video and I am so sorry. I mean it. I'm not good with um, with like making sure I'm on schedule. I talked about a little bit about that in, um, in my other video. If you haven't seen it, by the way, the video where I was like, this is the channel's changing and whatever, like that video, go watch that video before you watch this one because it's like a little predecessor before this video um and stuff and there's some stuff that I talk about that makes sense why this video is happening um but anyway I promised you a video and I um obviously did not give it to you in time and stuff and I'm so sorry for that I'm very much a procrastinator I always have been um I'm always like oh I'll do it the next day and the next day and then I end up never doing it and so I finally put my foot down and said no we're doing it today we're gonna make this video and we're gonna get it done and so that's why I'm here making the video now um, and, and the second elephant in the room is why I'm wearing this stuff. Well, it actually has to do with the video, obviously, um, since we're talking about, I guess, spoilers. But today, um, in this episode of Ranting Reviews, we are going to talk about the book, A Court and Thorn of... Sorry, let me fix that. I mean, the, a book fell. Sort of, kind of. Please stay. Okay, we're good. Um, so we're going to be talking about this book, A Court of Thorn and Roses, also known as the Akatar series. I mean, that's how you say it. It's spelled A-C-A-C-O-T-A-R. Sorry, I had to look at the book. <laughs> that's just how out of the loop I am. But anyway, um, if you don't know um, about this book, it's kind of fairy tale themed and like magic and stuff. And I was like, oh, you know what would be fun? Me dressing up for the video. And so I was like, oh, let me see what I have in my closet. And this is the only thing I could find that was like, I was like, okay, I feel like this is the act, like the vibes for this book. So will I be doing this every episode? Probably not. Um, again, I'm a full-time college student and as of right now, I'm still on break. So I have time to do this, these shenanigans, but these shenanigans may not, not stay the whole time. Uh, we'll see. But um, anyway, I thought it'd be fun to kind of dress up and be on theme for it. So um, yeah, I'm in a dress. Uh, I know you can only see uh, the half part of me, but I promise you I'm in a dress. Um, a long dress and stuff and yeah uh, and I'm also in gloves as well so anyway let us start this raving review by the way um, ranting review sorry um, by the way if you don't know this is gonna be the first episode well I guess you don't know because I didn't really talk about it in the other video so I guess I'll talk about it now but um, I'm planning to make this series called ranting reviews this will be the first episode of it where I basically just talk about things that I want to talk about um, either books I've read movies I've seen shows I've watched stuff like that um, will be in this series and why it's called ranting reviews is because I r tend to rant a lot um, and tend to just, we basically go on a journey together. We get on aboard the train, what I like to call the rant train, and we just go and, um, we try to find our destination and sometimes we get there and sometimes we don't. So, um, yeah, basically that's what this series is going to be. This is the first episode of that series, just letting you know. So we'll, we'll bit. Anyway, now that we've got all that out of the way, let's get into the book. So I'm going to structure this review with uh, three, we're gonna do three categories. We're gonna do the plot, we're gonna do the characters, and then we're gonna talk about the overall, my overall thought slash kind of rounding up the book, my overall thoughts, you know, ending the review sort of thing. It's kind of like the conclusion of a paragraph or, or a conclusion of a paper really is the better way. So anyway, let's get started. Okay, so first let's talk about the plot. So, for those who don't know, um, this book is based off of the story of Beauty and the Beast. And also, I found this out a little while ago, but it's actually very interesting. The book is also kind of based off the story of uh, East of the Sun and West of the Moon, which is one of my favorite fairy tale stories because it's actually very interesting. Um, 
for those who don't know the story, um, guess I'll try to summarize it for you. It's basically Beauty and the Beast, um, but for, um, it's basically like Beauty and the Beast, but for like a more, I don't know how to say it, more like, think like Anna and Elsa, like, I, I want to say Sweden, but I think that's wrong. I think it's Norwegian. I'm going to go with Norwegian. If I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments because I would hate to be wrong about this. But anyway, it's more of their take on it. Um, so it's more winter, think more, again, Elsa and Anna vibes, more winter themes, more of that kind of culture and stuff. It's actually very interesting. The story, again, not going to spoil it too much because if you want to go read it, you can. I'm sure you can find it um, any anywhere. But anyway, it's one of my favorite um, versions of the Beauty and the Beast story and stuff. So I was very uh, shocked to find out that this was, book was based on that, like the plot was. But then I also wasn't as shocked because it makes sense. Because the, sadly, East of the Sun and West of the Moon is very much like, it's like the romance is very quick. Sorry, let me fix my glove, it's bothering me. But anyway, I'll try to talk while I continue doing this. But like the romance is very quick and like kind of just happens like in the story. Again, read the book, read the story if you haven't, it's really good. Um, but like it just kind of happens and um, it's just kind of like weird and everything. But anyway, let's start actually start with the plot. So the plot starts out just like Beauty and the Beast does. Well, sort of kind of basically our main character, uh, who I'll talk about a little bit later, her name is Feyre. Feyre um, is a hunter. Um, she hunts animals for her family because her family is poor. Um, they tell you why later in the book. Again, not, I'm going to try to spoil as much as I, as le not as much, sorry, as less as I can. So in case you want to read the book, you can. Um, but anyway, so basically um, she's she's providing the food and like supplies for her family money stuff like that so she's the provider and stuff and um what ends up happening is tamlin who is our beast of the story he comes in and basically asks for a um he asks for basically the life of one of them because um uh, she has taken the life of somebody somebody that was dear to him and stuff and so uh everybody's so scared and stuff and she's like I'll take the blood oath I'll do it like I'll take on the penalty for my actions and he's like really okay and basically that's the start of their journey together um she's taken away um and stuff and goes to live with him essentially for a little bit and she isn't an indentured servant um fun fact and she isn't really a prisoner either it's just kind of like she lives there and doesn't do anything like that's really it and like most of the story like she's trying to escape but it doesn't work out for her and stuff so like you know it's very interesting it's a very interesting read um and stuff but basically the story happens a lot like beating the beast um in at some point in the story a flip is switched with her and she falls in love with him and she starts like wanting to like obviously like she has feelings for him and stuff but he doesn't know that he kind of knows but kind of doesn't he doesn't want to address it because he's like you're like I'm dangerous and you're like you need to be safe essentially that's what he that's the way he goes about it um and stuff and so like um um okay and then something happens to Tamlin again I'm trying not to spoil spoil it you know I'm trying not to have to spoil for those people who want to read you know read the book but anyway he, uh, something happens to him and she's like oh my gosh I need to go save him and stuff and um she saves him and something else happens but I can't say it without spoiling it so um yeah <laughs> sorry can't say that there's like a big twist at the end that's all you need to know there's a big twist it's at least it was a twist for me and maybe not a twist for you but it there's something happened that it, and that's, that's at the end that's uh, kind of shocking um and that's about it that's the story and stuff um so that's mainly the plot um talking a little bit about the plot I was very shocked with the plot because I thought it would be more it's the book seems to be more driven towards like action adventure and then like has hints of romance or what I consider romance for me romance usually consists of oh guy likes girl or girl likes guy or and there's like a trope that happens sometimes where it's like oh the girl can't be with the guy because of this reason or the guy can't be with the girl for this reason or it's an enemies to lovers trope like that sort of stuff you know where it's more like more like will they won't they and like the cl the farthest they go was kind of like you know kissing like that's the farthest we go and stuff but this in this book 
a warning for those people like me who thought it was just like, oh, it's an innocent romance book. It is not an innocent romance book. I know, shocker, right? Um, to be fair, I will give some credit to the author on her webpage where she talks about all the books and stuff. That's also where I found out um, that what the story was based on. I'm gonna put a link in the description below to that website in case you wanna learn more from the author and stuff. It's actually really interesting. But she does put in her description of her book on there, she does say it is a um, more aged up version of the classic Beauty and the Beast story. However, I didn't see that because m like many of you probably, uh, if, if I was to guess, um, you most likely found out about this book via Book Talk, which is where I found out about it um, because I'm on Book Talk. And um, also um, Goodreads too, also is another place you can find it. And funny enough, they don't talk about it on really on book talk, at least from what I've seen. Maybe I'm following the wrong people, but the people that I've seen who recommended, who I got the recommendation from, those people did not say anything about it being spicy. Like, and it's spicy like two different times. And it almost happens a third time, but thankfully they don't go that far. It's more like there's, you again, if you read the book, you'll know. But like, oh my gosh, like it is, it is like, it's crazy. I wasn't expecting it. It was a shocking thing for me. And to be honest, I'm, I've am i read Spice before. So like, even if it's in a book, I'm okay with skipping it. I don't love reading Spice. Um, I have many reasons why, but I'll give you the main reason why I don't like reading Spice or like books that are like, oh, it's a spicy book and stuff is because I think a lot of times Spice like takes over the romance aspect and it's sad and I don't want it to be like that. I want like if the spice has to if it has to be there then I want also the romance to also equally be the same. Like it should be the same amount of passion on both playing fields. Like it should be equal amounts of passion on both. And like in what I found in many like spicy books it's no, that doesn't happen. What happens is the passion is in the spice and it's not in like the fluff or like the 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 oh like touching her hand and stuff or oh he says like he's thinking about her like that part has none of it and then this part is all just like intense passion and stuff and I'm like I want it if you're gonna have it then equalize it okay be equal because like some of us don't want to read spice like I'm somebody who does not I just don't want to read spice it's just not my cup of tea it's just like it's just not for me if you're somebody who loves spicy books then again this book will be like right up your alley because Oh my gosh, there's good. The spice, some of the spice is, I'm, I'm sure is good, but I skipped over it because I didn't want to read it. Um, and if you want to know what spice is, if you don't know, then you probably are too young to be on this channel. Um, I guess, I guess I'll give you a rundown of what spice is. Um, if just a little bit, just a little, I'm not going to go too deep in it, but it's basically when it goes farther. <laughs> the rom the romance goes farther than like just the ordinary kissing and holding hands essentially. That's what it is. If you don't know what it means. Um, if you don't know, if you're still confused, then get off this channel because you are too young to be watching a video like this. I promise you, you are too young to be watching a video like this and too young to read this book because I'm like, like it was too much for me and I'm like, I'm like, and again, I'm a college student. So anyway, all of that aside, um, Basically, I've already told you about the plot. I've told you a little bit, I guess. I've let you a little bit, I've shown you a little view of my insights. I didn't mean to, but here we are. So let's continue on and talk about the characters. Okay, this is gonna be fun. So, um, characters. So we have Tamlin, who is our beast. We have Feyre, I think that's how you say her name. I've been saying it Feyre. If I'm saying it wrong, I'm sorry. Um, I'm just, I'm just going with it. But Feyre, um, who was our Belle, um, and, or our beauty. And then we have uh, all our side cast characters and then our big villain, um, whose name isn't told by the way in most of the book. Um, fun fact, just they don't mention her name until like the last quarter of the book and stuff. So for that purpose, I'm gonna be referencing her as she. I'm just gonna reference the villain as she. Um, and cause, um, yeah, that is, it's just because that's how they do it sometimes in the book and stuff. That may be seen as a spoiler, but they reference her like literally 
not joking. I think it's like a chapter two or three, like halfway through, like you're like in the first part of the book and they immediately like start talking about her. So like, it's not that big a spoiler, I promise. Just know, like I didn't give you a name or anything. So I feel like that's not a spoiler. Uh, but let me know if you think that's a spoiler in the comments, I guess. Um, but anyway, so we have our main character, Feyre. So Feyre for the first half of the book is very much an adventurous, like she's very adventurous, kind of cold actually. She's adventurous, kind of cold, kind of standoffish, but very strong in her beliefs and very much feels like she needs to protect her family. It's actually very refreshing. I really did like seeing that character. Um, I've read many a book, like I guess a in the retelling genre is the best way to describe it. Um, actually, this whole section over here is just retellings of books. Like, literally, I have, like, basically, I have, uh, like, I have a book called Stepsister over here, which I want to make a video about because that one is, sorry, Stepsister, which is right here. It's really good. Got to talk about it. It's a retelling. Um, I've got uh, Cinder, the Cinder series, which um, is also called the Lunar Chronicle series. That book series literally just a retelling of Cinderella like it's really good again want to talk on that book series someday and then like I don't know I have like Wonder Woman Warbringer which is kind of retelling and stuff it's like from an author like a author's different point of view it's very interesting again I'll talk about that one as well someday but anyway basically I love retellings I love fairy tale brings the telling specifically and so when I heard about this book that's why initially I picked it up um but anyway so our main, so Feyre is a lot like some of these people, but she isn't exactly like them, which was very new and refreshing, at least to me. Um, it seemed like she was very like, I've not had a lot of characters I've read where they're very cold and stuff, especially like towards like most of the people they interact with. It was very interesting to see. And also her being so determined was also very refreshing. I liked the determination of her and kind of her already knowing her purpose and her plan and stuff. Like, I, I just don't, I, I just liked that about her. Um, but however, that's in like the first half of the book, I would say like a few, like the most, I think it's like the first few chapters, or what I call the first part. Like that part, she is like, full on like favorite character. I'm like, yes, I'm behind you. I'm going with you. And then like part, what I like to lovingly call the middle section or like where the climax is happening, that part, she changes. Um, and all of a sudden is now obsessed. And I mean obsessed like with Tamlin, like who is our, again, our beast. Like she is obsessed with him, like thinking about how like she basically thinks all these things about him like how much she likes him and how much she like wants to be with him and stuff yada 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 she basically turns from the oh I'm a strong woman and I don't need no man trope to oh I'm a, like head over heels in love with a guy I'm boy crazy trope like it and it's not like they gradually change you like they don't gradually sorry gradually change it's not like they gradually move you into that stage they it's like whiplash they all of a sudden like a switch is flipped and she's all of a sudden like I'm in love with Tamlin can't live another day without him I need him in my life forever and stuff which is very weird again for her character because it's not it doesn't seem to be in her character at all at the beginning and then all of a sudden it just happens and we're just like okay um and stuff so at first for, like her in the first part I'm behind I love her as a character the second part I'm not so into and it's not because I have nothing against with the girl being obsessed with the guy or the guy being obsessed with the girl I think it's cute especially if it's a healthy way like how she is um, well, it's kind of healthy, but you know, it's as healthy as it could be in the situation they are. Um, and I understand why they probably didn't do the whole, um, the whole, uh, Stockholm Syndrome route. And um, I, that's probably why she, the author didn't go in that route because she was worried about what people would say. Um, if you don't know, uh, a lot of people are saying, um, the Beauty and the Beast movie is very toxic because, uh, they believe that Belle is in a Stockholm relationship. Uh, she's in a Stockholm relationship, which basically means that she has fallen in love with her captor and she is the innocent and stuff like that. Um, I have my whole views on that, which I plan to make a video about someday. Um, but basically, to summarize my views, I fully believe that that's not true, that, um, that Belle fell in love with the Beast after like she started to open herself up to him. Like That's what happened. So, like she fell in love with him 
after he saved her life. It wasn't like a, like, it wasn't like in this book where the switch is flipped and all of a sudden she's in 100% for the beast. It's like, no, he saves her life. Um, she starts looking at him a new life. She even fights him. Like, the, it's not like when she comes back to the castle to help, like, him mend his wounds that she's like, oh, I could never live without you, beast. I could, I need you forever in my life. She literally, like, starts arguing with him. I'm not kidding. He's like, he growls at her and she's like, you gotta stop moving. And he's, and you know, he, they have the whole thing where he's, where she's like, I, if you wouldn't frighten me, I wouldn't have been run away and you should have been in the West Wing, you know, and that whole thing and stuff. But they yell at each other full on, like they're still upset with each other and stuff. And uh, it, so it takes time. And they, they do say that in the movie, that love takes time and stuff. So I, I, again, I'll go into a huge debate about that. But based on that, I was expecting this, move, this book to go in the same route as the movie, to also take its time and kind of lead us in the direction of, oh, you know, you... We like that, like, like she gradually gets in love, like, finds her love in Tamlin after, like, some things happen. But no, it didn't happen that way. It was more a switch was flipped, and all of a sudden, now she's head over heels for Tamlin. Um, speaking of Tamlin, let's talk about him, because that would be fun to talk about. Um, so Tamlin is our beast, as you know, as I've said before many a time. Um, he's our beast, and to be honest, he doesn't have much of a characterization. Like, Beast to Beauty and the Beast had characterization. Like, he had a bad temper. He likes to read, but doesn't really, like, want to tell because it's, it's, like, you know, it's probably not manly, especially in those times. Um, he cares for his people, but he's also, like, worried about letting them in. Like, those are all characterizations we find out in the movie. Like, we find those out in the movie and the live action. They also hit on that, too. So, like, it's, it's talked about. Um... <laughs> They don't do that in here. Like, yes, Tamlin has some friends, but, like, it doesn't really seem like he has characterization other than, like, him being, like, all of a sudden, like, very concerned for Feyre. Like, very just much like, oh, I have to protect her and stuff. It's just, again, switch flips, all of a sudden he's into protecting her, she's into him. He just doesn't have as much characterization. I wish there was more. Um, I've heard from some people that the farther in the books you go, the better the characterization gets, but I have an issue with that, and I will tell you that, um, on our third point. Um, so let's talk about, so now that we talked about the two main characters, characters, I'm gonna also talk about background characters now, just a little touch, because there isn't much you need to know. Um, they're, the background characters are actually very fun, to be honest. I loved the background characters more than I loved the actual, like, main characters. Um, there's a guy who's, like, Lumiere. Well, he's, like, their ver the book's version of Lumiere. So funny. I loved reading about him. Wish we could get more on him, because his, his story is so interesting. Oh my gosh, it's so interesting, and I wish we had more, but we don't. Um, as far as I know in this book, and I just wish that, I wish we had more of that characterization, at least if you're not gonna even focus on him, have that characterization and backstory for Tamlin, because, like, oh my gosh, like, that would've been so, so nice, like, to have, and stuff, and he's, like, very funny, again, he's a good character, um, and I really liked his personality in the book, and then we also have, uh, the Mrs. Potts of the book and stuff, who kind of is, like, the handmaiden for Feyre, she's super nice, loved her characterization, it's very opposite of Mrs. Potts, she's more the stern old mother rather than the sweet kind gentle mom but I liked that more um because it was very different and I liked that they went in a different route for that and it made some for for uh, it made some fun um in like interactions between her and Feyre it was very interesting to watch them interact with each other and to see like them have them talk about things and stuff I really liked it um so now that I've talked a little bit about the now that I've talked a lot about the two main characters and then also touched a little bit on the background characters let's talk about the main villain who again I will be mentioning I will just be calling her she uh, mainly because in the book they talk of they use that name for a lot long time and then they finally give her a name but I won't tell you that's spoilers um, and I've already kind of spoiled with telling you that they call her she so my bad um, but I don't know what else to call her so she um, is the main bad bill villain of the the book and again I'm not going to spoil so I'm not going to tell you her backstory because her backstory story has spoilers in it so just know she's a bad villain and to be fair her backstory is kind of interesting but she's kind of just the regular like She's kind of crazy. That's the best way to characterize her without spoiling too much. She's just kind of crazy, and that's all we get. Like, I won't even compare her to another character, so I don't spoil anything else. But basically, just know that she's she's just kind of just, like, normal villain of just, like, oh, I'm going to take over 
I'm gonna take over. Yeah, I'm gonna take over. Woo and stuff. And I'm also a little crazy, so I'm gonna have a characterization. That's about it we get from the main villain. Um, sadly, I wish they had went a little bit more in depth with the villain. Well, they did actually, you know what, to be fair, and then I'm just thinking about it, they do kind of go in depth with her, but I can't say it because it's spoilers. Uh, but they kind of go in depth. I wish it was a little bit more. Um, but it's okay. I've, again, I've read books with this type of character, so I didn't mind it that much. Um, again, they could have gone so much more in depth, but they didn't, and that's fine. Um, especially because, uh, I'm sure that the, the author didn't want to give too much and stuff, which is totally fine. Again, this was her first book, um, and stuff, so, in the series, so she probably was, you know, just testing out the waters to see what it would be like. So, now that we've talked about, I think, almost all the important characters, or at least the characters I want to talk about, there's so many more characters in this book that are actually really interesting and stuff. Like, favorite Ra's sisters are actually very interesting, and they come back in the plot later, but again, no spoilers. I've already kind of spoiled a little bit. I'm planning not to spoil anymore. So because of that, this is that's all for the characters. And we've so now we're gonna move into our final thing, which is our wrapping up. We did it, guys! We're wrapping up. Oh my gosh! So this is basically let's talk about my overall thoughts and then wrapping up the video. Um, so my overall thoughts for this book were, this was not what I was expecting it to be, which is not, it wasn't good in the way I was thinking it was. I thought it was going to be more like, more like, I don't know, like books I've read before, like the Cinder, like the Lunar Chronicles series, or like Selection, or like, even to be honest, like World Above, above World, which I kind of liked, but kind of didn't like, like that book, which again, I plan to make a video one. Like I was expecting it to be more that type of book, where it's like, it's like almost made for children but it's not like it's like it's close but it's not close enough it's like the young adult section that's what i was expecting is young adult whereas this feels more adult like this is more for the adult person and i don't again if you're somebody who loves more adult takes on fairy tales this book is exactly for you and i have like I fully would recommend it, to be honest. If you're somebody who loves books like these, like that are more adult and take things more in a like less, I would say more like Lord of the Rings. Like it's it's more of a Lord of the Rings route than like a Disney route. Then like, again, this book is for you. Like I would def definitely recommend this. But for me, I would never recommend this book to me or somebody like me who like is more like, let's read more fantasy books. Like that's, I wouldn't have recommended this to her because it's more adult than fantasy. Um, I also wish, note to Goodreads, um, please write in your description um, about the contents of this book. Like, give a warning or something because you fully put this in the young adult section and I'm pretty sure, like, I don't know if all young adults, like, books are like this, but, like, you wouldn't know what the contents were based on the, like, description and what this looks like. Like, even the inside description doesn't really even say, um, anything. Like, it's just kind of, like, like, it just, it kind of hints on it, but not, like, fully. And I'm just, like, th that isn't her fault, though. I'm not gonna blame her. She, again, she said in her description on her on her website she was she said it was a spicy book but like goodreads you need to do it and then also i want to talk to the book talk community very quickly um if you're on book talk and you're recommending this book please put up a warning or at least can include it in your spicy book section because not all of us want to read a more spicy book a lot of us want to read um a lot of us like to read more young adult stuff like i would say young adult like you know, again, more like, think PG-13, whereas this, I would say, was definitely, like, it was close to R. Like, we were, we were jumping in. We were dipping our toes into the R pool a little bit, and I was not happy with that. Um, again, it is not a bad book. I do want to preface, want to preface that, um, what I've said by that. Just, like, it's not a bad book. I promise you, if you're somebody who likes these type of books where a, it's more of an adult take on a fantasy book than, like, this is for you but it just wasn't for me it wasn't um and i wish i had known i wish i had uh went to her website rather than goodreads to see because obviously she was very honest about it and other people were not um with the book itself um the story felt kind of rushed it just i i had so many hopes because like 
the Akatar book like community seems so nice and so friendly and so fun and it seems right up my alley but it's just like I don't think I will continue this book um which leads to another like a mini point I guess is that I've been told by many who have read this book series or in this book series community like the community for it they've said the first book is not so good but the third or second book is the best book in the series and I have a problem with that as a reader. So for me, like the first book is supposed to be your introduction to the world. It's supposed to hook, like get you hook, line, and sinker. It's supposed to be, you're supposed to want to read more after the first book. Like, like I should have read this book and been like, oh, I can't wait to read the second one. Like I can't wait to buy the second one because I can't wait to see where we're going to lead the story and stuff like that. Like that's how it was for me for, for Cinder and for like for the selection and even again for Above World where I didn't, I was okay with it, but I didn't really love it. Even in that I was like, oh, I kind of want to read more to kind of figure out where they're going to go with this because it's interesting. This book did not make me feel those feelings. I fully read this book, and, and again, I read it. I'm dead serious. I read this whole thing front to back, and fully, like, once it was done, I was like, I think I'm good on this series. Like, I don't think I'm gonna continue the series, which I hated saying, because again, I wanted to be in the book community for this book, because it looked like it's, it's such a popular book right now. A lot of people in the book talk community are talking about it and how great it is and I was like oh I would love to get in on that action especially because the book sounds right up my alley according to Goodreads but in the end I read it and I did not really enjoy it that much for my taste again I think many people um prefer that like like or even prefer spicier books and again if that's you this book is right up your alley because it is really there again there's some good points in it there's good, some good parts but it just wasn't my book and I just like and I just feel like if you're gonna do a if you're gonna write a book with a book series like if you're gonna write a book and then like write a book series on top of it I want I I don't know I feel like that should be part of the plans like that this is not a good start to the book series like I'll give you an example so right now I'm actually reading Percy Jackson, which is right here. I don't know if you really can see it, but Percy's right here. Um, I'm reading the first book of Percy Jackson because the new Percy Jackson series came out on uh, Disney Plus, and I wanted to be catched up for that series so I could uh, equally review it and stuff like that. Also, I've had a friend um, who has been recommending it to me because she's like, oh, you love Harry Potter. Like Percy Jackson is like Harry Potter, but it's just with the Greek gods. And I do love some me some Greek god stuff. Like Lore Olympus is one of my favorite webtoons to read right now. Like, ooh, it's juicy over there. But anyway, um, with this book, I've read two chapters and I am so hooked. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to read the rest of the series because this is so good. And it's been two chapters. The two chapters in this book, I was kind of like, I'm curious to see where this goes, but I'm not really having a fun time right now. And that isn't how I should be feeling about a book and stuff. So I, I do plan to be fair. I want to uh, read some of Sarah J's other books because I've heard, um, Sarah J Ma uh, Moss is the um, book author, if you don't know. I'm planning to read some of her other book series because I want to see if, um, if like she was just trying to go for a different feel for this book or if all of her books are like this and stuff. I've heard some good stuff. Um, I think she wrote uh, Throne of Glass, which is a book series I've actually been curious about getting into and stuff because it seems interesting. So I, I plan to read that one. And then also uh, Crescent City is another book series she's written, I think, um, and stuff. And she, um, and I've been wanting to read that one as well because it also seems up my alley. So I'm planning to read more book series from you. Um, Sarah J. Ma I don't think you're watching this video. Um, I'm pretty sure you're not. But if you are, just know that I plan to read other book series of yours. This book series just wasn't to my taste. This wasn't for me. Uh, this wasn't my cup of tea. But I'm hoping your other book series are because, to be honest, you're a great writer. And I know I'm going to round this up by, I'm about to round this out, I promise. But I want to say that, I want to end it by saying this. 
you are a great writer and stuff. My opinion is, again, my opinion, and it literally means nothing. There's a million people out there right now who are saying this book series is like one of the best things I've ever read. And I've been in that spot before. Again, um, I'm gonna mention Cinder because this, to be honest, this book reminds me a lot of the Cin like the Lunar Chronicle series and my first reading of it. It reminds me a lot of that because it's very much the same vibe of like taking a like, fantasy like story and then upgrading it almost and that's what I would call this I would call this an upgrade because it seems to add more um more elements to it now are they elements that I like no but again a lot of people do like those elements and stuff so um to be honest my this is just my opinion this literally means nothing please don't stop writing oh my gosh I'd be so sad if I was the reason somebody stopped writing books oh I'd be so sad um but this book is like again it's it's very well written actually I, I that was my favorite part actually of reading the book was reading the book like reading the words and like digesting everything like that was my favorite part um and stuff and it was probably the best part was of how well written everything is and stuff so I'm excited to read your other books um please keep writing um to be honest you're you've done more than I ever had because I've never written a book and I don't think I ever could because like writing a book takes such like confidence and like such like skill and to publish it so people like me would read it and then basically be like this is what I think on the book like and stuff but like do that is so hard and stuff and like so like so it's so brave of you essentially to write a book and to put it out and that's for every author in the world like and at the end of the day you've all written more a book than I ever have so like again take that as you will take that as take that into consideration that I'm just somebody who reads I'm not somebody who writes um and obviously I'm not a writer like you so this is again just my opinion and in the end of the day it doesn't really mean that much it doesn't really matter anyway um I hate Ryan uh, ending up on that but I guess the train has um has uh entered the station I am done with my rant. I'm actually very tired from my rant, funny enough, because I've been doing it for a while. Um, for 40 minutes, I've been ranting to you guys. Oh my gosh. Um, but anyway, um, if you want to read this book, look it up. Look, up, Go to the website also as well. Read the description. See if you like it. See if it's something you'd be interested in. Or if you're not interested in, that's okay as well. Um, this video was mainly, I wanted to make this video mainly because I had these feelings and I was kind of nervous. I'm actually very nervous nervous about publishing not publishing that's what people do about um like putting this video on the internet because of my view because I know a lot of people love this book and love this book series and stuff but I wanted to make this video for people who are like me who didn't really like the book and are kind of like not wanting to say anything um you're not alone I promise you're not the only ones who didn't really like the book as much as everybody else did everybody has different tastes everybody has different book tastes there's gonna be books that you like that some people don't like and there's gonna be some books that like they like that you don't like and that's just that's just how it is because everybody's different and stuff so please please don't be discouraged at this if you have a similar view to me uh put in the comments if you kind of think the same way if you're kind of like oh I had an opinion on the book but I didn't want to say anything or if you've had an opinion on a book before and not wanted to say anything because you're afraid of what people will think put that in the comments and stuff and tell me which book you kind of didn't like and stuff like that if you're feeling brave enough if you're not feeling brave enough then keep it you can keep it to yourself but anyway thank you so much to all of you for watching this video oh my gosh um thank you so much for the as of right now the 10 views the 10 people who watched my other video like 10 of you watched my video what why like but thank you so much for watching it um and watching for the watching this um if you're wondering when i will upload next i have no idea um i'm so uh, when I'm recording this video, um, school is going to be happening, like, I think a week from now, like, it's gonna start, and then that's when things are gonna get crazy for me, like, I don't even know if I have time to read, to be honest with you, because I'm gonna be basically just studying and doing homework and stuff and doing all the fun college things I get to do for my degree yay um but because of that um you may not see a video in a while and I'm, I am sorry I'll try to post as soon as possible or as soon as I feel the need to um to rant about something but anyway thank you so much for watching I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope that um you're keeping warm especially during the cold season because it is about to get even colder in some places so thank you so much um, love you all. Bye.